How was your day at school, son? Dad, hold on. I'm trying to get to the next level. Dinner's ready. Coming, Mom. I'm here to take your daughter out. This cannot be happening. Reactive, frantic, disorganized, unfocused, and stressed. How many of you would use some of those words to describe your life, your family, some things like that? Well, I want to welcome you to our new series entitled Fam Versus Wild. And uh, for the next several weeks, in fact, this series is going to last the entire month of May. When we dug into it, we just thought, man, we really want to unpack some things, possibly into the first weekend in June. And we want to equip your family not only uh, how to survive, but to actually thrive in wild times. I want to let you know that today's message is just an introduction. It kind of sets up uh, the rest of the series. So if you have your Bibles, I want you to go to Exodus chapter 19. We've been reading Exodus in our daily Bible reading, and my messages this year are out of our daily Bible reading. How many of you are a little surprised we're going to pull a family series out of the book of Exodus? (laughs) We are going to do it in Jesus' name. So let me give you some context. I'm going to begin reading in chapter 19 in just a moment, but I wanted to give you a little context out of Exodus 12, 38. Obviously, when we get to chapter 19, Moses, or God through Moses, has led the children of Israel up out of the land of Egypt and into the wilderness, into the wild. And uh, in Exodus 12, 38, it tells us that a mixed multitude went up with them also. I just want to bring that context that it wasn't just uh, the Jewish people, but it was a mixed multitude. People from all races joined the Jews as they came up out of Egypt and into the wild. Then in Exodus 19, verse 1, it says, In the third month after the children of Israel had gone out of the land of Egypt, on the same day they came into the wilderness of Sinai. For they had departed from Rephidim, And had come into the wilderness of Sinai and camped in the wilderness. So Israel camped there before the mountain. And Moses went up to God and the Lord called to him from the mountain saying, Thus you shall say to the house of Jacob and tell the children of Israel, You have seen what I did to the Egyptians, how I bore you on eagles' wings and brought you to myself. Now therefore, if you will indeed obey my voice, And keep my covenant, then you shall be a special treasure to me above all people, for all the earth is mine. I want to talk to you today about how to thrive in these wild times, you and your family. And I've entitled this message, Into the Wild. Into the Wild the wild. Let's pray. Father, we come to you in Jesus' name. Thank you for your word, God, for these next few moments. I pray that we would have hungry hearts, God, that we would have ears to hear what you're saying to us and our families. God, we thank you that you love us and you are for us and you are for our family. In Jesus' name, and everybody said amen Amen and amen. You know, many of you know, um, before we moved to Jacksonville before we started Celebration Church, I used to do a lot of mission work down in the Amazon jungle. And uh, I would lead teams into the wild, so to speak, and we would go into the Amazon and, uh, and plant churches and uh, do crusades and all that kind of stuff. And so when Carrie and I got engaged... My beautiful wife and I, when we got engaged, I would bring Carrie with me on these teams down into the wild, and I would lead her into the wild. And the reason was obviously because we thought that maybe, you know, God might call me to the Amazon full time or call us maybe to live down there uh, for a season or something like that. So I began to bring Carrie with me down to the Amazon jungle. And uh, a couple of things about the Amazon jungle, the two toughest challenges when you go into the Amazon, uh, the first one is the bugs, okay? Despite all the, you know, sleeping in huts and piranhas and witch doctors and bats and, you know, uh, wrestling gigantic snakes. Okay, maybe I didn't wrestle gigantic snakes, but... 
Besides all of those types of things, <laughs> we are into the wild. <laughs> wild media today. But besides all of those things, really the biggest two problems, the first thing was the bugs, man. The bugs, man, they would just, they would just eat you. And when the gringos would show up down in the Amazon jungle, it was like the buffet is on. You know what I'm saying? And we try to get, you know, all the off, all that kind of stuff. I mean, those bugs in the Amazon, they could care less about that stuff. That was just like seasoning. You, you know what I'm saying? In fact, I'll never forget one time we found this stuff. They told me about this stuff 100% deep. Like you got to get it at the Army Surplus store. This is like secret co-ops, you know, stuff they use down the, the armed forces down in the jungles. And I put some on my, my wrist and, and the, the deet actually ate some of the plastic off my watch. I thought, all right, this might work. Finally, I might have something. <laughs> And then I forget the first time I went down to the jungle, I took out my deet and I, 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 I put it on my arm like that. I hadn't had it on about five seconds and a big old Amazon mosquito just plopped down there right on my arm and just, just, just begin to suck away, man. Deet didn't do anything to him. And you would get so many bug bites the first week, you would actually start running a fever and then your body would just kind of have a breakthrough and you would get used to it. But that was very, very difficult. And then the other thing that was extremely difficult was the dysentery. So we go down to the jungle and obviously you'd pick up parasites and you're drinking water out of the river and stuff like that. So you'd always get some amoebas, parasites, something like that, bacteria, and you get dysentery. But the toughest thing about the dysentery was not just the dysentery, but how you had to deal with the dysentery. Because when you were in these villages, in the Amazon, there was one community toilet. And that toilet was not like the nice Western commodes that we all are able to use today. But in a village, there would be one community toilet. And what it would be is it would basically be a big hole dug in the ground. And they'd put some bamboo around it. And if you had to go, uh, you would go to that hole. Anyone in the village. And you would go to that hole. And they would have two boards over the hole. And you would put your feet on those boards and do your stuff. So you can imagine when you had dysentery and you were sick and you were going every 30 minutes to an hour and having to go out there in over 100 degrees in the jungle with all the bugs and deal with all that sickness and then, and then have to deal with that. You can imagine the smell. You can imagine everything going on with that. And then the icing on the cake was in most villages what you would notice after you would go to the bathroom in the community hole, you'd see the pigs come in. The village pigs, the farm pigs. And they would go in and they would clean the bathroom for you. And what would make that more interesting would be dinner that night. When you came in and you found out that the Indians, yes, they were having pig for dinner. Are you glad that your pastor has survived? Out of the wild. And one time, my poor wife, one time, Carrie, I felt so bad. I brought her on this trip, and this was a really rough trip. I mean, we were deep into the wild. We were deep into the jungle. And she had dysentery, and, and, and bless her heart, she was just going out there, the community hole, and it was so hot, and she had had it for a couple of days. And, and uh, man, I remember one night she was on the, the team would sleep in huts, and she was on the floor, and, and it was like her, her you know, her last calling out to me, maybe giving me her last wishes or whatever. She's like, Stowe, Stowe. And I came over to her. I was like, baby, what, what, what can I do for you? And she says, she was so sweet. She says, I love you so much. And I just want to let you know I'll, I'll follow you anywhere. I'll go anywhere with you. I'll go to the jungle with you. I'll go anywhere. I just want you to promise me one thing. I just need you to do one thing for me. Promise me that wherever we go, you will get me a Western toilet <laughs> that I can go to the bathroom on. All I ask you for is just one nice commode. I was like, baby, you need a toilet, man. I'm your man. I can do it, honey. I will get you a toilet. I will get you a nice American commode no matter where we go. You can count on me, baby. Can I tell you today? I stand before you. My wife today has access to four American commodes 
toilets in her house. Come on, because our God is able to do exceedingly abundantly above all that you could think or ask. That's right. I fulfilled my end of the deal. And ironically, here in Exodus chapter 19, here we have God bringing the children of Israel out of Egypt and into the wilderness, promising them that he is going to provide for them what they need. And Israel, really this throng of mixed people, they're, they're sick, not a physical sickness, but they have a sickness of their mind, a sickness in their attitude. And just to give you a little bit of context here that I think many times we, we, we read it, but we really don't understand how it affected these people. Remember, Israel had been slaves for 400 years. Now y'all think about that. In slavery, prison type conditions for 400 years. Slavery anywhere in the world is horrific. It is atrocious. And if you look around the, the world and you, you understand periods, even in our country when there was slavery, it was terrible, it was horrific. All around the world, there are people that have been put into bondage, but in most of those situations, as horrible as it is, it doesn't last for more than 50 to 100 years. Imagine the children of Israel 400 years as slaves, abused, dominated, illiterate, Many of them put to death. This was, they were, they were serving a pagan nation who would do things like this. And you read about it in Exodus. Oh, oh the children of Israel are getting too numerous. Okay, y'all go on down there and, uh, and, and just kill all the male babies. Every baby that's born. This was two million people. The children of Israel at this time, they were larger than the city of Jacksonville, counting Men, women, and children. We have about 1.3, 1.4 million, million in the greater Jacksonville area. Two million people. Go and kill all their male babies. Can you imagine right now if policemen were at every single hospital, every place where people had babies, and every single male baby that was coming out of the womb they were killing? Can you imagine what that would do to a society? What that would do to a, a people? Slavery 400 years Never allowing uh, them not being able to organize socially, being illiterate. And then in this pagan nation that would do these horrific things to them, in a pagan nation where, see, Egypt, they were polytheist. Polytheism is the worship of many gods. In the land of Egypt, they would worship hundreds of of God's. Well, this had gotten in the children of Israel. It had been 400 years since the days of Jacob. They were all polytheists. They all had idols. They all just worshiped. They would worship the Lord too. They would just worship a bunch of other gods. So this explains the way that God brought the children of Israel out of Egypt. He wanted to teach them a very important lesson. Those 10 judgments on the, lands of, on the land of Egypt, those were directed at the 10 main false gods of Egypt. Egypt. 